Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, an engineer with developer relations on Google Machine Learning, and welcome back to ML on Android with MediaPipe, a series introducing machine learning and its application on Android with the new MediaPipe solutions framework. In this video, you will learn about a technique called segmentation, which is a way to isolate items in an image or video stream using computer vision. You will learn about three main techniques today, image segmentation category mask, image segmentation confidence mask, and interactive segmentation. Let's start with image segmentation's category mask. As I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with video calls, this should look fairly familiar. When you use something like Google Meet to blur or change the background to some fun animation, you're using image segmentation to isolate yourself at the pixel level, rather than at a general location level like you would see with object detection, then changing everything else around you. The way this works is that the machine learning framework is looking at every pixel in the image, and then it looks at every pixel around each pixel to try and classify those pixels using a whole lot of statistical analysis. Once every pixel is categorized, you'll receive an array representing those pixels and the categories that the segment are predicted as possible matches. What's cool about this is that you can use models for multiple use cases, like the person and background examples that you just learned about, or segmenting out different parts of an object, like glasses, neck, and hair on an individual to do things like displaying that person with different colored hair. Now that you're familiar with image segmentation, let's take a look at how you would implement this in Android. The very first thing you'll do is import the vision dependency for media pipe tasks. Once you have that dependency, it's time to initialize your image segmenter. In this case, you'll create a base options object with the model that you want to use, as well as optionally set the device hardware that you want to use for performing inference. Remember that media pipe task is for on-device machine learning, meaning this model will need to be available on the user's device before it can be used. You will then associate that base options object with the image segmenter specific options object. In this example, you'll also use a live camera stream, meaning you will need to attach a set of result and error listeners. After that, you will tell the image segmenter that you want to use a category mask for your segmentation type. Finally, you will create your image segmenter using those options that you just built. To keep things simple, I'm going to skip over the camera feed code, but you can find it all in a sample on GitHub, which I'll link to in the video description below. The end result of this is that you'll get an image proxy object that you will then turn into a bitmap, and then create a new media pipe image object that will go through the inference step. You can also create an optional image processing options object to handle image rotation, letting you match your input camera stream orientation to what your model is expecting. After you have your MP image created, you can pass it to the image segmenter's segment async function, along with a timestamp that helps media pipe task automatically perform flow control and the optional image processor. If you're working with a video or image file, then there's also a synchronous version of this function that's just called segment. This will return an image segmenter result that contains another media pipe image, which you can use to extract a byte buffer, along with the image height and width. Once you have those values, you can turn the byte buffer into an integer array, grab the dominant category for each pixel in that array, and then store a color representing that category, which in this case is being stored in the same array to save on memory. After all of that, you can finally create a new image representing the image segmentation category mask. Optionally, scale it to match your screen viewing area, and then do whatever it is you're going to do with it which in the example case is just draw the category mask over a camera preview. At this point, you should be able to display a segmentation mask on a live camera feed, like this example you saw earlier, highlighting the different parts of a person's face. That was a lot, but there's still a couple really interesting things to cover. Next up is image segmentation confidence masks. This works in a very similar way to category mask, and it even uses the same image segmenter object. But rather than associating a category with the image's pixels directly, the segmenter attempts to highlight how confident it is in its ability to categorize each pixel. The main thing you'll need to do to set this up is to tell your options builder that you want to use a confidence mask during setup. After receiving the results in my example, I will display them over the camera stream UI by changing the transparency of each pixel to match the confidence score. Here you can see an example where this cat comes through as very confidently a cat then the rest of the camera view is somewhat covered since there isn't a high confidence in any sort of classification. The final topic we'll cover is interactive segmentation. This task takes an image and a region of interest, 
which itself can be either a single point on the image or a series of connected points, and returns a mask for that object that the interactive segmenter thinks may represent the main object in that region. The setup for this should look fairly familiar to you from earlier in this video, though now you will create an interactive segmenter object to handle all of the underlying work. When it's time to do the actual segmentation, you will take a bitmap that you want to segment, then create a region of interest based on the point, or points, that you're interested in, then call segment with result listener from your interactive segmenter. Finally, you can use that result in your app, which, in this example case, is just applying a color overlay to everything that isn't that region of interest. You did it! That was an overview of the different types of segmentation available for MediaPipe Task for Android, which we're hoping will help you add some really cool features to your apps. When you do build those great apps, please post them online and tag Google developers. Plus, leave a comment right here on YouTube, because we're really excited to see all the cool things people make.